Is BA's Club Europe business class getting better? I've just flown from Heathrow to Newcastle, a route I've done a lot recently and one that frequently involves an overcrowded lounge, a delayed departure and a subpar meal service, but there was absolutely none of that today. Let me take you through the experience. After arriving on a connecting long haul flight, we made our way through security and the connections and then went to find a lounge. BA have three business class lounges at Heathrow Terminal 5, the North Lounge, the South Lounge and the B Gates Lounge. Now normally my recommendation would be to go for the quieter B Gates Lounge, but as we didn't have too long till our departure from the A Gates, we decided to check out the South Lounge. We were very pleased to find updates to the furniture, including charging points on all the tables, and we did find the lounge quite a bit quieter than usual. Plenty of food options as always. And as we arrived around midday, there was a mixture of breakfast and lunch items available. I started out with some breakfast, going for sausages and hash browns. And then not too long later, followed that up with a steak and ale pie and some mashed potato. All the food really nice. As with BA Sub Heathrow lounges, there's plenty of spirits available for free pour, as well as beer, wine, and plenty of soft drink options too. I was in need of a bit of a wake up from our long haul uh, overnight flight, so I decided to grab some caffeine and went for a cappuccino. Briefly headed into the bathrooms, um, it's all very functional, it seems a bit clinical, uh, probably the one area of the lounge that could do with a bit more of an update, uh, there was at least nice soap available. And then before leaving the lounge I decided to go for a scone with some clotted cream and jam. Overall a really pleasant lounge experience, we're so used to having it so overcrowded in there and struggling to find seats but there was plenty available, nice and quiet and all the food was great. Arriving at our gate there was even more good news, we were due to be on time. I swear every time I've taken this route in the last two years there's been some form of delay often announced at the gate or we just take too long to board but today we were straight through, on time, absolutely no issues at all. Arriving on board our Airbus A320, let's take a look at the seat layout. The whole plane is configured in a 3-3, however in business class or Club Europe the middle seat is blocked out and has a tray table in between the two seats. And as we got on board, we made our way to our seats in 3A and C. The seats were comfy. There was a good amount of legroom, even though this is the same as what you get in economy. There's a very decent amount of space. Between the two seats was a tray table, and it's just a handy place to be able to put extra things. Uh, for example, a drink, um, or sometimes we'll put a phone on there whilst in flight. Uh, just makes you feel like you've got a bit more space when you have somewhere to put things. In-seat power is available to charge devices. And there was also Wi-Fi available on board, although given the short duration of the flight I didn't give this a try. Menus were handed out pre-departure, and I was a bit amused to see that we were getting afternoon tea. Um, I'm starting to regret having that scone in the lounge before we left. I think if I'd known I was going to be getting this on board I would have saved my appetite a bit. Good range of drink options available too, especially considering the short duration of this flight. Flight time up to Newcastle, only about an hour, so not too long at all. As we taxied over to the runway, we were treated to views of loads of different types of planes, and we even went past an old Concorde. As I mentioned earlier, this was a connecting flight after a long haul business class flight. That was coming in from Miami, um, and that video will be coming up on the channel soon, so if you are interested in seeing that, please do hit subscribe. We were treated some really great views today out the window for takeoff and then eventually disappeared up into the clouds. Very quickly after takeoff, the afternoon tea service started. I opted for the non-vegetarian one, which included smoked salmon, coronation chicken, and a goat's cheese sandwich. There was something very cool about having an afternoon tea with views like this out the window. Kelly decided to go for the vegetarian option, and she's not a big fan of salmon, and that included a brie and cranberry quiche, as well as a pepper and hummus sandwich. The drink service started about halfway through the meal. I decided not to have tea to go with my afternoon tea, instead going for a Coke. My scone was really nice, uh, pretty much exactly what I had in the lounge. Um, unfortunately it was quite cold though, Kelly's was served nice and warm, uh, but mine wasn't at all. Overall the flight absolutely flew by, um, I mean it's a short enough journey but when you add in the really nice meal service it just went by really really fast. Service from the crew was great and it was all around just a really good experience on the flight. And a great journey as a whole, the lounge had been nice and quiet and the food there had been good, the departure was on time and I think we actually arrived slightly early. 
the food on board was great, the service was good. The only slight letdown, which I don't see changing anytime soon, is the seats. Um, it's obviously you know a bit more space than economy unless you're in the exit row. But the fact that the seat isn't a big upgrade from economy is a bit of a letdown. On arrival into Newcastle, we were informed that the jet bridge was broken, so they brought out some stairs. Um, and although this is a bit disappointing, it was actually a great opportunity to get a great view of the plane. I recently tried out short haul business class on American Airlines, and if you want to see how that compares to this experience with BA, then watch this video next.